so guys uh, uh, welcome to uh, a2j program so uh, this is a trading program which is basically play a role between academic and a industry requirement so it is uh, academic to job plan so our more focus will be towards the industry requirement so uh, this is this is not going to be a theoretical training or a classroom session it will be a more focus and more uh, uh, more uh, focus towards the industry requirement and it would will be more interactive right so in order to make this session more uh, productive we request you and expect from you that you will make this session interactive so ask as many as question you can you can if if you have any case study any any example you can share with us and meanwhile we will have some exercise some assessment some uh, interactive sessions with the with the help of we can uh, we can involve you into the uh, training part right so as uh, rajiv sir mentioned uh, i'm a, i'm a network trainer i do have 16 year experience and uh, i'm a basically a network trainer and out of 15 uh, out of my 16 year career I, from last 15 years i'm delivering training so uh, basically i i do deliver training to the telecom uh, network a part of that i do also work with the with the indian navy so indian navy do have their own communication network called ipmpls based uh, naval communication network so i'm playing a role as a subject matter expert i'm creating content and delivering training a part of that uh, i have been work with nokia huawei ericsson and uh, in my 15 year uh, career i have been deliver training to more than uh, 10000 telecom and network professionals across uh, across uh, countries uh, maybe more than 35 countries i have been visited and deliver trainings to uh, operators as well as oems right so today uh, we have two hours time and during this session we are going to start our network uh, knowledge where we will deep dive the how, uh, how what is network and uh, how it look like various component their functioning their their uh, role responsibilities right so today we are going to start with a very basic topic which is the osi layer so we will we, uh, we will uh, try to uh, complete uh, the osi model the uh, various type of uh, addressing scheme like ipv4 ipv6 and little bit about their uh, various uh, kind of subnetting and other stuff right so uh, before going to start i again request you please be present in the class physically as well as mentally right and make the session interactive okay so uh, shall i start anything else you like to add anyone so am i awesome. good to go shall i start yes sir okay. yes sir good so uh, is there anyone who can brief me what is osi model or why do we need this model anyone because i i believe uh, all of participants are from sixth semester so i have i believe you have gone through the osi model what is this osi model and why do we need this anyone <clears throat> sir osi model is a reference model used for uh, layer communication sir layer communication what is layer communication so generally we will be having seven layers in osi model mm -hmm. so this will be dealing uh, how if a communication is to be done between the source and destination mm -hmm. uh, how actually each layer uh, should act sir means it is not compulsory that it should follow the protocols mentioned in the osi model but it should uh, take some reference regarding the protocols mentioned in the osi layer sir very OSI. very good very good so oh, what's your good name sir rajkumar sir rajkumar thank you rajkumar so i request you whenever you you answer or you say something please mention your name so that i can remember your name so rajkumar thank you so much you you gave a very good explanation that's what can you give me any example of where we where we use this reference model any example uh, 
uh, actually no sir okay. no problem no problem so uh, thank you rajkumar and uh, you gave a very correct example that it is a reference model and it doesn't require to use all the layers of uh, this model it it can be a customized uh, 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 it may be a customized layer uh, functioning in any any communication so let me tell you one thing osi model is kind of a guideline right and this guideline applies in every type of communication whether it is a laptop to laptop or computer to computer communication or i'm just giving a very very uh, common example that we are currently using in our daily life like a mobile communication that also use the osi reference model this entire mobile network is designed on this osi model in fact all our lan wan man these all networks are designed and works on this osi reference model so whenever we say any communication in 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 terms of the digital communication network there will be a reference of osi model there is no communication network present that is working currently without this reference model right so now let's understand what is the need of this uh, reference model basically see the, in the in the early days in the early days whenever the communication started different companies organization and institutions were doing their research and they are developing communication communication uh, devices right but the point is they they were using their own standard they were using their own set of rules in order to doing communication let's suppose take a example of cisco cisco is developing one set of communication network right similarly there is another company called juniper or tejas or any other xyz company they are doing their own communication uh, network setup right now as a being a customer as a being a uh, as a being a, 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 a service provider i need to buy telecom i need to buy this network equipment right now the challenge is if i am using a multi vendor product if i am using a my solution is based on multi multi vendor uh, uh, solution where i am buying a switches from cisco i am buying a routers from juniper uh, and i am buying a server from hp and if they are not understand their languages their messages and they, if they are not using a same set of communication model it will be very difficult to communicate with each other in that case my open interface will be lost i have to buy a single oem network i have to buy all the equipment from one oem so that will be a very big challenge for me because it will definitely impact my my cap capital and expenditure as well as it will impact my operational expenditure there there will be no open interface i i i i, I will be bounded with that uh, oem only let's suppose there is a switch available of 48 ports with uh, x company who is giving it in 1 lakh rupees and other operator who is giving it in 20000 rupees if there is no common reference model i i'm 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 bounded to buy that a a product so for that this reference model play a very important role here right so this reference model is just a kind of a generic platform which gives some standards which gives some set of rules and if all the companies are using the same set of rules they can communicate with each other each other right okay so let's start with the osi reference model so here you can see how the reference model look like right so here OSI reference model is developed by International Organization of Standard called ISO in 1984 so the purpose i believe it is clear that it will give you multi vendor device compatibility which i just explain you so if all these multi vendor companies are following this OSI model 
they will be compatible. It means I can choose a router from X, I can use a switch from Y, and I can use a server from Z if they are using same reference model. So am I clear with the requirement of OSI model? Yes, sir. Good. So our first point is OSI model gives me compatibility between multi vendor devices. Secondly, it is ease to deployment and ease to troubleshoot. How? See, if it is a OSI based model, which is a generic model, there will be. There I can get a resources easily because. X, Y and Z. All these platforms are working on same model, so there will be a pool of resources they can doing the deployment and troubleshooting. But if my model is only specific to X, in that case, the number of resources for performing these activities will be very limited. In that case, it will create a monopoly for the market in the market, which is not a healthy business case. So I need to have a pool of resources they can work on Cisco, Juniper, Tejas and XYZ company. Right. So here the purpose is very clear in order to achieve a multi vendor compatibility, easy deployment as well as easy deployment. Guys, I request you please keep your mic on mute so that uh, we will avoid this background noise. Thank you. Okay, now let's understand how this OSI model works. Okay, so <clears throat> now now there is again a uh, there is again a, a point of discussion that uh, we all know OSI layer is composed by seven layers. So someone says this is my layer one, and someone says this is my layer seven. So it depends. You cannot say it is seven, uh, layer one or layer seven. If you are starting from here, it will be your layer one. If it is, if you are understanding, if you are starting to learn this OSI model from this layer, it will be your layer one. So it depends on you. There is no no catch or there is no no um, uh, such constraint that you have to consider this layer one. It may be a, 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 it, it may be a, any ways around, right? Okay, so. You can I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you one example with the help of you can very easily understand this uh, model, right? So uh, in order to explain this complete OSI model along with their functionality and their limitation, I'm going to I'm going to give you one. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you one story and with the help of this story, you will very easily understand what is the OSI model and how 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 does it work? And it will also help you to uh, understand or uh, sorry, it will also help you to remember their functionality. OK, guys, so let's start uh, to. This story in which let's suppose there are two companies. There are two company X and Y. Right. And these are the two companies where X is an Indian company. And Y is let's suppose a Chinese company. OK. Now these two companies are going to uh, to work together. So so there should be some some agreement bet between these two companies. We call it a NDA non disclosure agreement, right? So let's suppose X want to share a NDA with this company. So this is the. Managing director of this company. His name is let's suppose Piyush. Sorry, let's suppose he is Akash. Akash is the name of this. The company 
director he is the managing director of this company so akash just drafted one nda and this nda is having 400 pages so this is a 400 pages document which is drafted by akash as a non disclosure agreement now this document is uh, created by akash and he want to share it with the director of y company who is let's suppose anil so this is the name of this company's uh, managing director so akash will ask his pa his name is piyush he will ask to piyush that this is a very confidential non disclosure agreement that i want to share with anil who is the managing director of y company so you take this document and keep and provide this document uh, with anil so piyush who is the who is the uh, assistant of akash who will receive this document and he will check he will check what is this document all about and he will find that this is a very confidential document but there is a problem that akash is a indian guy and this this complete document is written in the language english which is strange for anil because anil is a chinese guy who do not understand english so what is the what is the responsibility of piyush he will just convert this english nda into chinese language so what is the function of piyush here he is just converting the same information in a different format now this is the format which is readable by anil so now piyush will ask his assistant who is name as sumit and he will ask him that this is a very confidential document and i have converted into the chinese language and i want to send it to managing managing director of y so he will ask him that please arrange to transport this document safely and securely within the time to anil right so sumit will receive this document in chinese language which is a 400 pages and he will call to the another department or the person in y company his name is suresh and he will ask him that boss i am calling from so and so company and my boss like to send a document to your boss so is it your uh, so uh, is it is your company open today so he will say yes our company is open today so he will ask at what time you you will close your office he will say i am going to close it at 8 pm so it means i will wait for your document till 8 pm so sumit will ask to suresh okay boss i am sending this document to you and as and when you receive this document kindly acknowledge me suresh said okay sumit i will wait for your document and once i receive it i will acknowledge you right then suresh will call a guy his name is tarun and he will said that this document need to send to managing director of y and you have to reach by 8 pm right so this is and before 8 pm you have to reach there now tarun will do certain things here first tarun will decide if i want to reach by 8 which convenience will be more suitable for me so tarun will decided that if i go by metro i will be able to reach before 8 pm so he will decide a mode of transmission right a part of that a part of that he will do one thing that this is a 400 pages a confidential document but if any of the page is missing that may cause a very difficult situation for everybody right so 
Tarun will do one thing that let me let me uh, let me just draw it here again. So it is the same layer, right? So he just divided in four segments. So now there will be four packets and each packets do have 400 pages so that if any of the packet goes missed, rest of the information or rest of the documents will be safe. So here Tarun is doing two things. One, deciding the mode of transmission and also he is doing some segmentation. He is dividing the entire information in four parts. Right. Then he will ask uh, another guy who is who is Nitin. Right. So once Nitin comes, he will hand over these 400 four page packets and he will ask him you go to the met you uh, you go via metro and hand over these four packets and you will reach before 8 p.m. Right. Nitin will receive all the four packet packets and Nitin will check that there is no address mentioned here. So Nitin will understand that this is my responsibility to reach this doc to provide this document safely and within the time given. So I have to mention the address that source address as well as the destination address means to and from. So Nitin will mark the address here. Source and destination address. So source will be X, destination will be Y. And then Nitin will send it to the another guy who is named as Dilip. Now Dilip will receive four packets and Nitin will say that these are the four packets very confidential. I have marked the address. Now you need to send it to Y company. Now Dilip will do one thing that all the packets are open. If any of the document is removed, how will how will I identify? So Nitin will do some sealed. He will seal all the four packets means now the packets are sealed or you can say the encrypted so that if anyone open it, it will be identified. The packet is damaged, right? And then he will send to someone who is known as Prakash. So Dilip will send him all the four sealed packages and he will ask him that now you need to go to the metro station and once he will take a metro and he will reach at the destination where he will hand over these four packets to another guy. His name is Prem. So Prem will receive all these four packets and send it to the respective person. His name is Deepak. Deepak will first check whether these documents are sealed or not. If it is sealed, then only Deepak will accept it. Otherwise, he will decline that this is not, I cannot accept it because it is open. There may be some information leaked, so I will not accept it. And if it is sealed, he will accept it and send it to the another guy. His name is Nupur. And Nupur will check the destination address. Okay, here the destination is Y. So it means it's for our company and we can accept it. He will send it to the another guy. His name is Saran. Saran will here when he segmented, he also marks some numbering here like one by four, two by four, three by four and four by four. What does it mean? It means that these four, four packets are part of one packet. So here the Taran will do the concatenation. So he will reassemble all the 400 pages and it will become again a 400 pages and then it will send to Suresh. Now Suren received that packet before 8 p.m. So it will immediately acknowledge to Sumit that boss we have received your packet. This is called a session. So here the Suresh was waiting for this packet and once the packet is received, it go to the another guy his name is, let's suppose, uh, Pravinder. 
so here he will check yes it is in chinese language so my boss can read it and it will go to the managing director so in this complete story everyone doing his own role so here this role this part is a application layer which who create this content who create this message right so this is called a application layer who actually play with the message who actually play with this information then it goes to someone who is taking care for the presentation means it should be a presentable it should be in the form of a readable format if it is not this particular layer will do some pre coding and convert it into the another format then this is the third one is known as the session layer who basically establish a session between two nodes so that it will check whether the session can be created session is not your traffic session is just a window between two party to transfer and receive and acknowledge the uh, transformation of the data and transport layer basically tells about the mode of transmission which protocol we need to send as well as it perform some segmentation and concatenation it divide the packets data in packets and reassemble it at the receiving end network layer basically add the addresses so it add the ip addresses and send it to the data link layer so here the data link layer is basically performing some security so it provide some security it's doing some uh some encryption and send it to physical layer to actually transmit the data according to the physical media whether it is rj45 or it is a, a 100 base t or it it is a rf signal am i clear <coughs> so here every layer is performing a specific task and with the help of this entire communication a secured communication take place so here you can see <coughs> excuse me application layer is one who is close to end user so application layer is basically a set of protocol that is close to the user so can you give me any example of any application component any application component which helps to create the content or the data anyone email or email whatsapp messages <coughs> whatsapp okay email whatsapp anything else okay giving you four options right tell me which you can consider as a application layer component first email second excel third powerpoint fourth google chrome tell me the right correct answer for the application layer emails email okay chrome from okay what about excel 
Is it an application layer or not? Okay, this is correct answer. This is also correct answer. What about these two? Sorry. These are not applications. Sorry. Those two are five formats. I'm not getting your voice. Those two are five formats. Sir. File formats. formats and they do not require internet. And OSI layer is something for communication and these are not required internet while email and Google Chrome need so. So all the applications, they need a internet protocol like HTTP, P2P, email, POP, SMTP, Telnet or FTP. They need an internet. So they will be considered as an application layer component. Am I clear? All these software they which need a internet will be considered as application because they want to send their content to the other system, other computer or other server. Am I clear? Am I clear? <clears throat> so, yes, sir. Outlook is email. SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol. It is also a protocol that we use behind this email. Telnet, FTP, DNS, domain name server, or HTTP, all are internet related applications. So this will be called as an application layer component. Okay. Moving forward, these all applications create the traffic or create the data. Now, this data may be in any format. Let's take example. This data may be multimedia message where audio can be there, video can be there, text can be there, or there may be some audio, video, text, or it may be some images. Right? Okay. Now, in if you talk about audio, in audio, there may be multiple type of formal like dot mp3, dot web, dot mp4 and so on. Similarly, in text, there may be different type of format like dot csv, dot txt, dot doc and so on. Similarly, in the image, there may be different type of format like dot jpg, dot jpeg, that dot png and so on so this presentation layer is basically responsible for converting all these audio files in one defined format maybe x all these images will be converted in a predefined format maybe y so this data presentation layer is responsible for recognizing the format and convert into the predefined format so that it will be a set of rule. It will be a set of presentation method. So all the audio file will be converted into MP3. All the video files will be converted into .avi format. All the images will be converted into JPEG format. All the word file will be converted into doc file so this is the function of a presentation layer that it convert all the languages in chinese language am i clear <clears throat> now coming to the session layer session layer is basically responsible for creating a session between two network so here we have some session establishment protocol like tcp sip rtp and so on most famous most popular and most famous protocol is sip session initialization protocol all your whatsapp facebook viber emo use this protocol sip session initialization protocol in order to establish a session right next comes transport layer so transport layer 
these all are the different transport layer protocols tcp udp sctp ssl and sls so these all are and i i i need not to give you the difference between tcp and udp hope you all understand that one is uh, connection oriented and other is connection less protocol we will we will discuss later about these two protocols right so these are the method to transport this content which is coming from the upper layers right a part of that it is also responsible for reliability so how can we ensure the reliability with the help of segmentation and concatenation so it will divide the entire data in form of the packets right so that we can provide some reliability then it's sent to the network layer so in the network layer again we have path determination and logical addressing so how can we identify a path with the help of the address and there is a different mechanism for the addressing like ip arp and so on so here we have ipv4 or ipv6 these are the logical address schemas that we will use here into the network layer then data link layer so in the data link layer it again provide the physical addressing like the mac layer so it gives logical address it gives physical address and a part of that it also provide some encryption and decryption so that your packet will be sealed and then it goes to the physical layer so according to the physical media availability whether it is ethernet cable optical fiber rf signal or any other transmission media so according to this physical transmission media it will convert that signal in that format and send it to the recipient network so here this is a transmitter and this is a receiver and vice versa <clears throat> am i clear with the osi model refer this yes, sir you can refer this uh, table that application layer which is close to the end user and it consists of the protocol that work in network like these examples so it will create a data that data goes to the presentation layer where the presentation will be coded so data will be formed in, into the data format but their format will be defined then it goes to the session layer where the session will be created initiate maintain and close the session with the help of these protocol then it goes to the transport layer where we will select the transport protocol and it do the segmentation and check the ch add the checksums network layer will add the logical address and type the set the protocol for the logical addressing like ipv4 ipv6 and so on data link layer add the physical layer like the mac address and it also do the error checking for that it add some frame check sequence and send it to the physical layer where the physical as per the physical connectivity the data will transport in the form of bits so here we are sending data from application layer it is a data goes to the presentation layer it will just convert the data format in a predefined extension and then it goes to the session layer in the session layer it doesn't play with the data it just create a session with the receiving entity and then it goes to the transport layer once it reach at the transport layer transport layer do the segmentation and add some header of layer 4 which is a transport layer which tells about the method to transport protocol whether it is a tcp or udp so here you can see the segmentation is done and it is adding some encapsulation which is known as l4 header which tells about the tcp protocol or udp protocol which is the protocol we have selected at a transport layer then it goes to network layer where the network layer add its header which talks about the logical addressing right so whether it is ipv4 or v6 that logical addressing headers will be added with this with this 
packet. Then it goes to the data link layer where it will add some header and some header bits and some tell bit which added uh, the physical address as well as the security bit which is the FCS uh, 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 checksum bits will be added and then it goes to the physical layer where it will convert into the binary format and it transmitted. At the receiving end, the complete uh, vice versa process will take place. The physical layer will receive the binary information. It goes to data link layer where data link layer will remove all the L2 headers, which is your physical address and the security bits. Then it goes to network layer where network layer will remove the logical addresses, then it will go to the transport layer where all the four concatenated uh, segmented packet will combine, will concatenate it and goes to the session layer. Once it reach, reach the session layer, it will be a complete packet and it will acknowledge to the transmitter that packet is received. Then it goes to the presentation layer. Presentation layer will ensure the uh, presentation uh, type and then it goes to the application layer and at the application layer it will be reproduced. Whether it is SMTP protocol, HTTP protocol or any other FTP protocol, it will be used that and it will reproduce it. Am I clear? Questions? Questions? No question? Is it clear? Yes, sir, it was cool. So, uh, shall we move to next topic? Yes, okay. So similarly, uh, similar to OSI layer model, there are some other models exist like a TCP IP model, but there I would say the functioning is exactly same. Only the nomenclatures are different. So if you like to understand the TCP IP model, you can easily understand the TCP IP model with a comparison with OSI model. So here the all three layers of OSI layer application presentation and session layer known as application layer in TCP IP model. Similarly, the transport layer is known as transport layer only. The network layer is known as internet layer and the data link layer and physical layer is known as network access layer, but their functioning is exactly same. It means this network access layer is performing two things. It is adding the physical address. It is adding some security mechanism and it is converting the packet into the bit format. So it is basically a combination of these three uh, layers. So application layer is nothing but the combination of, of these three layer functionality. Right. OK. So I hope uh, this uh, reference model uh, concept is clear. We will have one assignment for you and uh, there you will get some questionnaires. At, so at the end of this session, I will share these questionnaires with you. So you need to go through the questionnaires and uh, you will submit your assignment, right? Similarly, uh, we will have some uh, two more topics like IP addressing and the subnetting. 
so similarly we will we will uh, uh, provide some assignment on ip addressing and subnetting so next in the next session you need uh, before that uh, next session you need to submit your assignment and uh, then we will uh, we will discuss those topics and then we will start a new topic so every day every, every in every session we will recap the last session then we will talk about the assignment uh, we will we will discuss the assignment and then uh, we will move to the next topic <clears throat> okay guys so uh, let's start the next topic which is the internet protocol so can sir, anyone tell me yeah sir uh, uh, can you go back to previously ah oh, okay sir so what? sir i would like to ask a question sir regarding this one yeah please. so if we merge all these three what is the advantage of uh, means what are the advantages that tcp and ip model is uh, getting from merging those layers sir any advantage sir no no there is no advantage or there is no limitation as such see these are the two different uh, different uh, you can say two different books so these are the two different reference models right so in the osi layer there are seven layers while in the tcp layer there are four layers so there is no advantages or or you can say the uh, disadvantages of tcp ip over osi or vice versa you just need to understand that in every communication osi model broken up these entire communication in seven stages while tcp ip model broken up it in four stages this is the only difference but if you talk about the application layer it is performing all the three functionalities of application presentation and session layer so you cannot say that tcp is better or osi is better both are doing the same thing but their method of explanation is different any time complexity regarding the uh, both layers sir because application layer or i mean in osi layer first it will be going to application layer presentation layer and session layer step by step but in tcp directly we are performing all three operations at the side sir so any time complexity or like kind of things sir you can you can you can understand that in this application layer itself there are three internal functionalities because session layer or presentation layer functionality is still present into the application layer of tcp ip model but this this application layer as a combined as a whole known as application layer but there are three functionalities still present into the application layer of tcp ip model it doesn't mean that we are skipping this presentation layer and session layer no it is not like that this diagram itself depict that this application layer is performing the function of all three layers but it is named as application layer okay sir thank you sir well <clears throat> okay so can anyone tell me ip addressing present in which layer of osi model now onwards we will refer osi model only right because it is a detailed one it is the uh, i would say the distributed one so osi layer is uh, very good for understanding the network functionality so can anyone tell me ip addressing where we use the ip addressing in the osi model network layer network layer network layer very good because ip addressing is a logical address and it is it is a function of network layer right okay what is the difference between logical address and physical address sir physical address uh, is fixed for all the system sir it is mac address basically so mm -hmm. mac address will be fixed for uh, every each and every device sir but uh, logical address is, will be changing for each and every device sir when you communicate dynamically Uh, an ip address will be created and that is an uh, logical addressing sir it may be dynamic or it may be a static but it it will change but mac address will be Same universally sir. unique mac address is 
universally unique number which is assigned by a, a authority in order to identify that number among all the network interface equipments available across the globe so mac address is the universally unique number while logical number is not that right so logical address means which can change and physical address which may not change like the mac address okay and why do we need these two addresses to identify ourselves in communication sir to receiver or like okay that that we will understand gradually when we start ip addressing so uh, let's understand that ip provide the logical addresses at layer 3 so now this time it is starting from bottom physical data and network physical data and network so now we are saying this is layer 3 this is layer 2 this is layer 1 and this is layer 7 right so depends so all these devices use ip addresses like routers multi layer switches servers pcs ip for packet communication between source and destination so source may be one pc and destination may be another pc now the internet protocols are two version ipv4 or ipv6 <coughs> is there any is there any uh, version called ipv5 is there any version ipv5 did you hear about ipv5 why it is not ipv5 sorry why not ipv5 instead of ipv6 any idea any idea okay tell me one thing do we have ipv5 do we have ipv5 yes sir but yes. it has limited the number of users yes very good why do we need ipv6 because ipv4 was exhausted this particular logical address schema was not able to provide ip addresses as per our modern requirement today every device need a ip address and in the 5g when the iot going to be implemented there will be huge requirement of ip address which ipv4 cannot meet so we need a more ip addresses so ipv4 is not able to provide that so we need a new address schema so ipv5 came up but ipv5 there was some limitation in ipv5 that it cannot meet our requirement then ipv6 came so now we found ipv6 is capable to provide to meet our requirement right so now we need to understand what is ipv4 then we will understand ipv6 okay <clears throat> we are not going to learn ipv6 with the comparison of ipv4 first we will learn ipv4 its subnetting then we will start ipv6 it will help you to understand the ipv6 and its subnetting once we will go through the ipv4 and its subnetting right so here we will understand ipv4 and its subnetting first then we will move to ipv6 right so uh, shall we start okay so in the ipv4 it is
32 bit ip addressing 32 bit ip addressing so when we say bit it will be 0 or 1 so that 32 bit broken up in four octet so here i can say a b c and d so if it is one octet which will carry eight bit similarly eight bit eight bit and eight bit so it will become 32 bit right it will become 32 bit right now in the ipv4 addressing we represent two things one is network bit and other is host bit because if suppose this is one network this is another network and there are multiple hosts available we need to identify the network as well as the host so we need to define the network in two terms. One is network bit, other is host bit, right? So this complete IP addresses schema divide in five classes, right? So here we have different classes according to the different requirement it is divided in class C, class D and class E. So we have different classes and every class give us different number of network bit and different number of host bit means somewhere we need more network bits and somewhere we may need more host bit. So according to the different requirement, we have classify in five type of networks so that it can meet our requirement. Right. So see, there may be some small company, there may be some middle class, middle scale company, there may be some uh, large scale company, there may be some extra large scale company. So as per the different requirement, as per the number of hosts required, and as per the, uh, uh, as per the uh, requirement of number of beds in network bed, we classify the entire range of the 32 bit in different classes so that we can cater and we can meet the requirement of all the type of industry whether it's a small scale industry or it is a large scale industry right so the class a so now 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 we need to understand that let me draw it here so if it is a dot b dot c dot d so in the ipv4 it is separated by decimal okay so as i said it is 8 bit so this value may be 8 zeros and it can go up to 8 ones right so if it is all zeros, it will be zero. If it is all one, it will be 255. So that decimal to uh, binary conversion will also uh, discuss later. First, we understand the classes of IPv4. So if it is 
class a ip address it will start from here a dot b dot c dot d again a dot b dot c dot d so it will start from 1 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 so this is the first ip address of class a we do not consider 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 while we start from 1 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 and it will end up at 126.0.0.0. So this is the last IP address of class A. Similarly, in the class B, it will start from, can anyone tell me the first IP address of class B? Anyone? One twenty seven, sir. One twenty seven. Are you sure? No, no. sir. One twenty seven is for local host, sir. Exactly. So it will start from one twenty eight dot zero dot zero dot zero, and here one twenty seven dot zero dot zero dot zero is reserved for local loopback for self testing. So we do not use 127 IP because it is reserved for local loopback testing. So it will start from 128 and it will end up at 191.255.0.0. This is the last IP address of class B. I will I will I will explain you a simple method to convert this uh, decimal to binary and vice versa. Then class C starts from 192.0.0.0 and it will finish at 223.255.255.0. Next class D which starts from 224.0.0.0. 0, 0 0.0 and it finish at 239.255.255.255 class e which starts from 240.0.0.0 and it will finish at 255.255.255 dot two five five sorry i lost this do you need uh, do you need that uh, shall i shall i write again shall i write again yes sir else i think it is there in our ppt let me check no it is not there so anyways uh, I will write it again for you. So, <clears throat> class A 1.0.0.0 goes up to 126.0.0.0. Class B will start from 128.0.0.0. It goes up to 191.255. Dot zero dot zero class C starts from one ninety two dot zero dot zero dot zero. It goes up to two twenty three dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. Then class D class D it starts at two two four dot zero dot zero dot zero and it goes up to two three nine 
255.255.255.255. Then class E. which starts from 224.0.0.0 and it goes up to 255.255.255 and so hope you can understand 255 means all ones it's all ones <clears throat> The class is 240 at Okay, guys. So now there is a, another thing that we have need to understand here. Let me let me draw it here. That in class A, these are the four octet. One, two, three, four. Similarly, here we have in class B, one, two, three, four. Similarly, in class C, 1, 2, 3, 4, and something for class D, 1, 2, 3, 4. Class E, generally we do not use. It is reserved for research. And class D is also used for multicasting purpose. So generally we use up to class C. So now I'm going to show you how do we distribute these octet in between network bit and host bit? So if it is a class A, the first octet A will be your network bit. In class B, these two octet will be your network bit. While in class C, all the first three octet will be network bit and rest all are host bit. So in class A, in class A, network bit will be 2 to the power 8. Why? Uh, let me let me write it here network bit and host bit. Right. So in class A, number of network bit will be 2 to the power 8, while number of host bit will be 2 to the power 24. If it is class B, the network bit will be 2 to the power 16 and host bit will be 2 to the power 16 equal. While in class C, it is 2 to the power 24 and the number of host bit is 2 to the power 8. Am I clear so far? Guys, am I clear so far? Yes, sir. Everybody, please acknowledge. Is it clear or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, one more thing. Uh, do you do you know how to convert this binary to decimal? Or shall I explain you? Okay, this is the 
Sorry. Expensive. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to give you the uh, exercise for you. So uh, I'm giving you the uh, actually see there are n numbers of methods available for uh, decimal to binary conversion and vice versa. There are n numbers of method. If you go, if you search in uh, internet, you will find n numbers of method. I want simplest way, most simplest way. So this is the exercise for you that in the next session, you will tell me which is the most easy method to convert binary to decimal and vice versa. Right? Uh, if you if you could not get the simplest way, I will tell you. Right? So this is the first exercise for you. OK, please note it down. You have to tell me the easiest method to convert binary to decimal and vice versa. OK. Fine. Now. I'm going to tell you one thing. That uh, will tell you how to identify network bit and host bit. So let's take an example that this is one IP address. Let's suppose 115 dot. 10 dot. Uh, let's suppose uh, leave it 115 dot 10 dot 0 dot 15. Can anyone tell me the class? Can you tell me the class of this IP address? Class. Sorry. Class A or class B? Class A, sir. Class A, yes, this is class A. Why? Because it fall between 1 to 126. If not work bit, OK. Now, I like to know that network ID of this IP address. 115 sir. 115 sir. Network ID. 115. See. Always remember whenever you want to know the network ID or uh, network ID, you just need to make network bit as one and host bit you need to mark at zero so whenever we want to get the network bit you need to make host bit as zero so if it is a class a it means this is my network this is host this is host and this is host so for need to know about the network bit i need to convert all the host bit as zero so my network id will be 115.0.0.0 .0 .0. There is a, another simplest way to do it. I will explain you later. But if you want to know the network ID, make all the host bit zero. Am I clear? Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm giving you the another example. 196.10.10.10. Tell me the network ID. One ninety six dot ten dot ten dot zero. Ten dot ten dot zero. Is it correct answer? One ninety six dot ten dot zero dot zero. One ninety six dot ten dot zero dot zero. Zero dot zero. Last two are zero. Okay. Any other option? Any other option? We need network ID.
enough this is all about two ip addresses okay which is the correct one a or b yes sir how many says b i am saying b is the correct answer a is wrong who tells b is the correct answer please explain please explain why b is the correct answer first tell me the class which class class c sir it is class c so as per class c it should be network 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 and host so in order to know the network id you need to do the host bit zero so it will 196.10.10.0 rest is your network id it is not class a it's class c am i clear yes sir yes. what about rest of the participants am i clear or not please tell Sir. me if it is not clear no worry i will i will explain you again i hope it is clear see it is ip addressing and it is the root of the subnetting and it is the root of the other uh, stuff if it is not clear i am telling you you won't be able to understand subnetting and ipv6 so if it is not clear this is just a start tell me I will explain you again. Clear? Yes, sir. It was clear. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay. Moving forward. Next topic is. subnet mask can anybody tell me what is the meaning of subnet mask why do we need it okay tell me why do we need subnet masking a very simple question why do we need subnet mask although we have ip addresses then what is the need of subnet mask Have you seen subnet mask anywhere? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Where? In command prompt, if you type uh, "if config," uh, it will be showing all the uh, our IP address and all right. the subnet. Very. Let me show you. Let me show you. i need to stop my sharing now i need to share my whole screen okay <clears throat> so there are two thing one if i use cmd and i use ip config it will show you the subnet mask here can you see here Can you see here subnet mask? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is showing 255.255.255.0. Okay, so this is the subnet mask which is configured here. Let me show you another place where we can get this subnet mask. If I go to network setting. change adapter option <clears throat> for ethernet uh oh 
let me so here these all are the my network cards available so i can go to the ethernet if i go to the property it will show me ethernet property and if if i go to the ipv4 internet protocol version and if i go to the ip it will show me the subnet mask let me right so this is how it shows the subnet mask and he, here from we can define the static ip address and subnet mask so first now we need to know what is the meaning of subnet mask and why do we need it second question why do we need subnet mask anyone why do we need subnet mask sir in the word itself says subnetting sir so our network will be divided into some smaller networks for effective communication maybe do you know why we use subnet mask any guess any any guess okay shall i tell you what is the use of subnet mask see let's take a example of any ip address of any class let's take a example of class a okay this is it So which class is it? Class A. Agree. So in the class A, we know that the first octet is network, then it is host, then it is again host, and this is again host. Right. who make this first octet as that work v v decided it but our computer do not know which one is network bit and which one is the host bit so this perception or this concept we have created for our understanding but that computer that nick card do not know this concept that this is a this is if it is between 1 to 126 it will be a class a it means it is a network bit and rest are the host bit we have to tell our computer we have to tell our network interface card that this is a network bit so that you can read you can start reading the host from here am i clear the requirement of subnet mask am i clear or not because this segmentation is done by us for our convenience 
but our neck card do not know that for that we need to we need to use some method to tell that computer that the first octet is network bit and rest is the host bit because it is a class a or class b or class c or class d so we have to tell the computer that boss this is a class a ip address so you have to start reading the host from last two octet am i clear yes sir now if this is my ip address 115.10.10.20 so i know that this is a class a ip address where the first octet is network then host then host then host oh, sorry 115.10.10.20 so if this is the ip address it means this is my network bit this is okay let me use the another one sir your voice is not audible एड्रेस
गाइज एम आई क्लियर विद द क्वेश्चन और शेल आई रिपीट द कॉन्सेप्ट I'm not getting your voice. Previously, we didn't get your voice. Please explain. Okay. Again. Okay. Repeat. Repeat. Thank you. So, subnet mask. We 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 know that uh, if any IP address which is starting from one to one twenty six, if it is the first octet, it will be a class A. If the first octet is starting from 128 to 191, it is class B. If it is 220, uh, sorry, 191, and if it is 192 to 223, it will be a class C. That we we knows, but our computer do not know. We have to tell him. We have to instruct that this is a class A. It means the first octet will be network, and rest three octet will be host. that we have to tell him similarly if it is class b the first two network two octet will be network and the remaining two octet will be host so he will start reading host from here only similarly if it is class c we have to instruct that all the three octet is network and the last octet is host so there should be some method to tell our network interface card to read network bit and host bit and that method is called default subnet mask so how can we define the default subnet mask let's suppose our ip address is 115.10.10.20 so this is a class a ip address because it falls under this range so in order to know about the subnet mask you just need to convert all the network bit as one and all the host bit will become zero so it is my network bit host bit host bit and host bit so the network bit will become one it means all the eight bit 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 and all the host bit will become zero 1 2 three, four, one, two, three, four, one, dot 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 similarly the last octet i'm writing here 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 so if i convert into the decimal this will become 255.0.0.0 so this will be the default subnet mask for this ip address so once the computer read this subnet mask he will know that this is my network bit and rest are the host bit for this ip address hope you remember what was the network id it was 115.0.0.0 so he will know that this is my network id rest are the host id am i clear yes sir yes sir yes so shall i give you one example yes sir so the next example is 160 dot 10 dot 20 dot 10 tell me the default subnet mask to 25 to 255 dot 255 dot 00 255 dot 255 dot 00 dot 00 dot 00 can you explain please Yes, sir. One sixty is a class B. It is class B, correct? Uh, uh, there are sixteen uh, uh, two power sixteen network bits and two power sixteen host bits. Very good. So it will be all ones. It will be all zero. So it is two five five dot zero two five five dot two five five dot zero dot zero. Clear. Let me show you one one thing. uh right here so let's suppose i'm giving one ip address tell me any any ip address tell me any ip address One ninety two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot 
जीरो जीरो क्लास विच क्लास वन नाइंटी टू इज क्लास सी राइट क्लास सी तो इफ इट इज क्लास सी तो सबनेट मार्क्स शुड बी टू फाइव फाइव डॉट टू फाइव फाइव डॉट टू फाइव फाइव डॉट जीरो करेक्ट करेक्ट इट विल ऑटोमेटिकली टेक द सबनेट मार्क लेट्स टेक अनादर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स टेक अ क्लास ए वन वन फाइव डॉट टेन डॉट टेन डॉट ट्वेंटी क्लास ए करेक्ट एस सर ओके so now it is time to recap i am not going to take the next topic which is the broadcast id and number of usable host that we will discuss in our next session but this is time to recap so far we discussed about osi model so i hope it is clear any question in osi model no question hope it is no, clear no. okay very good so here we have seen that in the application layer it is data then it is data then it is data at transport layer it become segment then it become packet then it become frame and then it become bit and vice versa method hope it is clear then we started comparison between osi and tcp and then we just started ip address we just started so we saw that uh, there are four classes that we basically use ip a b c d in d d we use for multicasting so remaining a b c we use in our network so in class a there will be one octet first octet is network next three is host class b two octet for network two octet for host class c first three octet is network last octet is host and a part of that we discuss about the subnet mask so subnet mask is what it is the method to tell our nic card which one is the network bit and which one is the host bit so far we discuss this much thing next topic is calculation of the network uh, number of host number of active host network id how to identify network id how to identify broadcast id and then we will start subnetting ipv4 subnetting so that we will discuss in next session okay guys so uh, if any question you can ask and yes so guys we have 30 participants today i hope uh, we will have more sub participants in the next session and uh, all these 30 participants or i think 28 participants will be continue our next session and uh, here uh, i'm going to share a uh, few questionnaires which is based on osi layer right i don't know how can i share uh, the questionnaire i will ask to uh, our coordinator and kanan sir and then i will share the assignment which i created for you which is based on purely osi model i am not giving you any question on ip addressing that i will uh, give you in the next session right so here i can we can spare uh, 10 minutes for your questionnaire if any no question okay if there is no question uh can i ask something can you tell me any device name which works on layer 3 any networking device name which works on layer 3 
लेयर थ्री मीन्स नेटवर्क लेयर नेटवर्क लेयर मीन्स विच कैन हु कैन रीड द आई पी एड्रेसेस रोटर रोटर वेरी गुड एनी अदर डिवाइस अदर देन राउटर there is another device called l3 switches so we will discuss about the l3 switches which is a switch but it work as a l3 device so we call it a l3 device so l3 device is also a network layer device okay fine tell me any l1 and l2 layer device one l1 and one l2 device switch in l2 sir switch is l2 very good and what about l1 computer computer sir computer do have all the layers because computer do have a nic card computer is having the application layer which is your outlook any other device which works on physical layer okay hub hub or repeater are layer 1 device because these are not intelligent device and they just connect the devices with the network and all the multiple devices in the hub that do not do any kind of filtering they do they just copy the data from one port to all the ports so it detect the physical connectivity whether if any device is connected with that hub device or uh, uh, hub or repeater device it just copy paste the information to all the active ports that is physical layer device so physical layer device which is which is having no zero intelligence it just copy paste all the information it just broadcast while the switch or the bridge both are layer 2 device means data link layer device right so they learn mac address which is a physical address they save the mac address into the table and direct the data to the intended mac address port so the layer 2 device update the mac table as well as update the intended port that is the difference now if we talk about the router router is basically which route the data from one network to another network and it is based on ip addresses and it's a gateway for any network these are the basic difference so in a, in a in a layman language if i just like to differentiate the router and switches i can simply say switch create the network and router connect the network what is the difference let me show you in the in the white board let me use a white board i don't know how it will come this white board okay let me open my ppt again here i have my ppt okay so let's suppose this is one computer this is another computer this is another computer similarly we have another department which is having let's suppose five computers right here i need to have one switch that switch one will compute connect with this pc1 pc2 and pc3 and they will connect like this so this is one network this is network one similarly here we will have another switch 2 and it will connect pc1 pc2 pc3 pc4 and pc5 they will get connected with the switch and it will become network 2 now if i like to communicate between these two network i need to have one router and these two network will connect with this router that's why we say switch creates the network router
connects the network. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is all about for the day. basics okay guys thank you so much for your participation wish you all the best and stay safe uh, rajiv sir karan sir uh, can we wind up the session or anything else you like to add uh, uh, thank you sir it's okay. fine sir that is okay uh, you can make uh, some assignments uh, so or maybe you can put it on uh, uh, rajiv sir assignment already created uh, and i will share uh, if there is any any share portal or any sh so, group so i will share share i have given you access actually okay sure sir sure i will i will provide i will share it challenge then you can contact me or anything. sure sir sure, sure. Advantage of classroom is uh, once you upload it there, then each of them will get it individually, and they can upload the answers in the classroom itself. Sure, sir. So, any, any queries from anyone? Uh, otherwise, we will wind up this session. I think uh, Sumit, we can close uh, the session. And uh, okay. okay, sir. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.